Hey guys, I hope that y'all are doing well, and today I've lately been going on a Diary of a Wimpy Kid book series hike, in the sense. I've just been revisiting the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series because I used to read it a lot, and now I'm going to rank every single one of them. Alright, coming in last off, we have Double Down. I'm not entirely sure why Jeff Kidney made this book, but it is easily his worst. I cannot tell you a single event that happened in this. It is surprisingly sad and i cannot name a single part that was actually worth reading and that didn't make me at least cringe a bit thank you very much all right coming in second to last we have the third wheel this one had a pretty good idea that went horribly we've all heard the case of many tv shows book series and just stuff having good ideas for books slash episodes but it ends up just going out horribly some of these feel like a bit like superficial in a sense like this wasn't made by a teenager named greg huffley it felt like it was made by like a the a parent of a teenager by the way if you hear me stuttering a lot it's because i'm doing this improv all right thank you very much all right coming in next we have the long haul Honestly, this is a big step up from the last two, but it's still surprisingly forgettable. This one is probably my oldest because it's definitely showing signs of wear and tear. It has a bit of a cardboard marking. The pages are a little bit ripped up. I even have a Batman sticker somewhere and a Nickelodeon Choice Awards sticker. You know what I mean? And it shows its fair share of wear and tear. Honestly, this isn't the worst one. I mean, the other two are the worst ones, but I think that... This is miles ahead of the last two, but miles behind all the others, if that makes sense. It has, like, a bit of a, not a happy medium, but a surprisingly sad medium, if that makes sense. Alright, coming in as a bonus, we have Diary of Greg Huffley's best friend, Rally Jefferson. This one is a little bit interesting, because it isn't a part of the Rally Jefferson Adventure series, and this isn't exactly Diary of a Wimpy Kid. This is more of a preview. And honestly, this would have been a little bit higher up if this included a bit of a bonus more than just the first few pages of the first Riley Jefferson book, except for a meltdown preview. Yeah, so even though this isn't exactly a book, I'm still counting it for the merit. Speaking of meltdown, meltdown's a bit of an interesting case because this is one of the most recent ones that we've done, probably like four books after it. I'm not even sure anymore. I've just given up after a getaway. But honestly, uh, this was just ever so slightly overhyped. Also, it really bugs me that this wasn't produced or even made in winter. But the day after Halloween. No, wait, the day before. But I think that you already get the gist. Alright, coming up next we have The Getaway. Now, this one feels like Meltdown Part 1, if that makes sense. The storytelling vibe gives off the same sort of sense, and it does really help that they're right before and after each other. There's just something about it. Honestly, I... And also, the reason I'm calling it Meltdown Part 1 is because I can really say the exact same thing, except for, like, the published time. Alright, next up we got the deep end. I Now, I know that this is about to sound like broken records, but this is literally just Getaway Part 2. I know. I said it. So, like, Meltdown would be Part 1 and a half, if that makes sense. This is a little bit interesting because, A, this is the first time he moved on from solid colors to, like, a cool format. But, honestly, it feels like Getaway. It has the same vibe as Getaway, except that there is a bit more of a happy ending. And that's why it's just a little bit higher. I know for a fact that this is going to get people mad at me in the comments, but yeah, the last draw. I know that people like this one, but it's really bare bones. It feels like that it should have came in, like, a little bit later. And when we learned a little bit more about the Diary of a Whippy Kid universe, I feel like that this is probably the most forgettable, even though it's decent in all senses. Alright guys, congratulations going to the turning point, and as a turning point like celebration, we're doing a dual evaluation with the two different do-it-yourself books. Now you may think that these two are the same, but after a little bit of a closer evaluation, you'd notice that one has colored comics right here, and the other one has a journal where you can write your own story in there, so that's pretty cool. 
these two were pretty much the same. It's a really good idea when you think about it, but it felt like a little bit too bare bones for me to put it up just a little bit higher. But overall, pretty good. All right, let me just rapid fire the next three because they have a pretty similar rating. We have Big Shot, Hard Luck, and Old School. All right, Big Shot is one of the newest ones as of recording slash editing. And you know what? This one actually is pretty good as far as it is. I wasn't expecting Greg of all people to end the sports, but I would totally chill with it. However, the story felt like something that we had seen before, even though it wasn't, if that makes sense. It felt like that this could have come up at any time in the series and would still have made sense. All right, straight after that, we have Hard Luck. And this one is pretty interesting. I like the concept of the Magic 8-Ball mid-book. However, this one is one of the most forgettable, and I call this the Forgettable 3, which consists of Third Wheel, Hard Luck, and Old School, where the books, they're okay in a sense, but, but A, one is much worse than the other, and B, they're all pretty forgettable, but should be a little bit more underrated than they actually are. And finally, we have Old School. Now, this one, I ain't gonna lie, it's pretty good. I thought that this was going to be more of like an 80s book where like Greg finds out about his parents' childhood for the duration of the story and tries to like be like them, but it, but you know, like some wacky hijinks happen and less of more of a camp story, but you know, I'm completely chill with it, but I felt like that this was going to be much different and finding out some more like lore of the series. All right. And now ending this decent to good section, we have diaper overload. Honestly, this is the newest one coming out. I mean, there's nothing to be honest about. That's just a fact. But you know what? This was pretty good, but it was pretty, like, one-dimensional of the story. We didn't really hear a single thing about the rest of the family or really that much about Rally or really anyone else in the series apart from, like, Roderick, Loaded Diaper, and Greg himself. And he didn't even feel like an aspect part. This felt like... That felt like, um... What am I trying to think of? Yeah. Roderick Rules Part 2, if that makes sense. Alright, and now marking slash ending the good section, we have The Ugly Truth. Now, this one is actually surprisingly slept on. This one has a pretty decent styling to it, in one sense. Not style, just style. But this feels a bit interesting because we see a little bit more of Frankly, we see a little bit more of the family life. And we just see more of, like, the middle school world that Greg has to grow up with a bit more accurately than they've been portraying it. Alright, now we're starting up the best. For number three, we have the original book. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this one was an amazing introduction to the series that we all know. And if I'm being honest, I think that they did a really good job in finding out that Rally ate the cheese at the end. Spoiler. Was a bit surprising. I wasn't expecting that. Now, I'm not going to act like it's the best in the series. There are two other ones, and you can already, like, imagine what the last two are by process of combination. But as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty deserving of where it is. Coming in at number two, we're correlating with the book number. We have Roderick Rules, the second book of the series. And debatably, it shows off Roderick, easily the best character in the series, showing off just... How much of a person he really is. I really like how this is very Roderick centered. But it shows off the, the hijinks of everything else. And I'm actually rereading this as we speak. So that's pretty cool. So you know what? This one's really good. Better than the original man had. And you know what? It's deserving but not as deserving as the next one. And now guess what? It's cabin fever time baby. You know what? This one is a fan favorite, I'll admit. But it deserves to be a fan favorite. It has a very good winter style. It is it is amazing. And I really resonate with it because it came out on the year I was born. So that's pretty cool. And you know what? I'm actually really glad that Jeff made this. Honestly, this felt like the the turning the beginning of the end for for Jeff and his later books because Let's be honest, after Cabin Fever, things got a little bit worse, and then after Gate, after the getaway, things got pretty bad. So, actually, this was uh, pretty good. If they ended the series by this, I wouldn't be okay with it. And that's all there really is to it. If you enjoyed this video, 
like and if you disagree with my rating tell me what your rating would be in the comments or just which one do you think should be on top or bottom and i hope that everyone has a nice day see ya